नमस्कार जय जिनेन्द्र एंड गुड इवनिंग टू एवरी वन आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू आर टूडेज वेबिनार एक्सप्लोरिंग दिटी ऑफ जर्निज्म इन एशिया अफ्रीकन अमेरिका टूडे द स्पीकर इज नितिन एच पी ही इज अ फाउंडर एंड एग्जीक्यूटिव डायरेक्टर जैन हेरिटेज सेंटर्स डॉट कॉम एंड ही इज अ हेड ऑफ मार्केटिंग टेक्नोलॉजी स्ट्रेटेजिक मार्केटिंग विप्रो लिमिटेड His title of presentation is Salekhna Inscriptions of Karnataka: An Overview. And this inscription, uh, this uh, presentation will gives a uh, glimpses of the Salekhna inscriptions of Karnataka spread over a period of fifteen uh, hundred years with details of people from different section of the society. And our respectable guest of honor doesn't needs an any any introduction. He's a life institution for us. He's Dr. Hampa Nagrajia, Hampa Na Sir. so firstly uh, sir thank you so much for accepting our invitation and we are we are truly blessed to have you here as a guest of honor sir it's really an and a blessing for us that you are here and you are attending our webinar and uh, before nitin sir starts its lecture i would like to give a short introduction about nitin sir uh, so we all know that he is dedicatedly working in the field of jainism and uh, he has a keen interest in jainism and he has he is a founder and executive director of the website jain heritage center jhc which was launched in may 2002 and this website gives an 8000 images and 3000 pages of research information on jainism and jain heritage centers uh it has a publications related to jain heritage temples archaeology ritual jain way of life events puja and so on and uh, he has other websites also which is related to jainism and jain sites and he is a research and epigraphist and he has unrevealed and published 10 ancient jain inscription in hilangana hile gan hile ganada sorry if i am pronouncing wrong okay. uh, it's an old kannada in uh, inscription from 11 to 18th century and he is also an author of jin yatra authored the book jin yatra in 2018 a collection of research articles on karnataka's jain heritage he has also authored articles on jain epigraphy iconography temple and heritage sites published in various research magazines journals and periodicals apart from his keen interest in jainism uh, professionally he is working from last 15 years in the field of it such as ibm essential and wipro as well as a digital marketing agency he has led the guinness world record making the initiative of the world's largest photo sculptures for essential he is the head of the marketing marketing technology team for the strategic marketing unit at wipro limited holds the charter for catering to the team's technology requirement and involved in building marketing strategies He also leads a team of IT professional that manages corporate websites such as engine optimization and marketing, marketing uh, automation, demanding generation, data privacy, marketing operations, and other initiatives for strategic marketing teams at Wipro. So, sir, we are truly glad. We are very thankful to you that you have accepted our invitation to be the speaker of one of the webinars. So. without wasting the time it's over to you sir thank you jay jinendra uh, let me share my screen uh, when we start the presentation let me know when you are able to see my screen yes sir it's visible feel free to stop me in case if there are any network issues and if there are any questions we can take them up uh, at the end sure sure definitely yeah. jay jinendra uh I would like to thank uh, Digambar Jain Mahasabha for providing me this opportunity to speak uh, in one of the webinars uh, on the topic of Salekana inscriptions of Karnataka. Uh, so, uh, friends, like uh, when we speak about uh, Salekana, and uh, you know, like uh, what happens is Salekana means everyone uh, thinks about what is Salekana, what is the awareness of Salekana among the people, is what we should. Uh, look at many people have heard about the term salekana many of them they know that or they knew that it is a jain ritual some knew as to how it is practiced and scholars uh, have have 
and had an in-depth knowledge of sadhakana in its forms styles practices and different forms so their in-depth uh, study of religious works then when it comes to archaeologists and epigraphists they knew about uh, it through the inscriptions and memorials then moving on when did sadhakana or the discussion of sadhakana came to the forefront it came to the forefront in 2016 during the rajasthan high court's verdict wherein it clearly said the practice of sadhakana or santara is illegal and jains cannot practice it henceforth and it is, they, they said it is hereby ordered that the jain community should provide proofs of the, of its practice prior and post independence that is a very short summary of a, a long uh, verdict which i have tried to summarize and uh, when that is one part of it that is when many people started thinking about sadhakana then so now i have given you what was the current state of thing now let's look into what is sadhakana in the jain religious literature very sh- briefly we say it has been uh, referenced in uh, or mentioned in various religious works like marana karandika bhagavati aradhana ratna karandika shravaka chara and purushat siddhipaya and many other religious works i have just mentioned a, a couple of them here and uh, that is in terms of sadhakana in jain religious literature then moving on uh, the what is the concept of death in jainism many of them will ask why did jains install memorials in memory of people who died and many might ask why death is a natural process why is it given so much of importance and jainism is a really, and so that is how that is a normal question any common man or, or a common man would have if we try to understand jainism jainism as we know is a religion of dharma and is a religion of atma and atma is invisible when a person dies it's just an end to his body but not to his atma atma is what we believe hence why should we fear death so death is glorified through memorial and accordingly acharya samanta badra in ratnakarnaka shaukachara krana poet pampa in adi purana acharya jinasena in purva purana they have discussed about death in detail it can be summarized as jains are not scared of death instead they welcome death they call it as maha navami that is a great festival they welcome death in a way similar to welcoming birth celebrating death is the speciality of jainism okay then practice of sadhakana and i just mentioned like we about the mem- the mention about sadhakana in various uh, scriptures and other details and jains haven't restricted the sadhakana only to the books instead they have practiced it in their real life and after practicing it they have installed memorials in the memory of people who have died, died or attained samadhi by practicing the sadhakana ritual then what are the sadhakana memorials called as in memory of people who have attained samadhi through the practice of sadhakana different memorials have been installed across india over the centuries and the sadhakana memorials are named in different types in different ways some of in karnataka it is called as nishadi nisidi by the various names in tamil nadu probably as palli nasiya or nashiyaji in northern india chatri in gujarat and few other parts of northern india and also as stone these are all the different ways how the sadhakana memorials have been called now in this particular presentation let's focus on the sadhakana memorials of karnataka which are called as nishadi nisadi or nishidi okay moving on so nishadi is the definition uh, when it comes to the nishadi of the sadhakana memorials how are they defined in the jaina religious literature if we try to let's try to have a glimpse of these things the reason i'm trying to go through these some of the basics is this will add as precursors to our discussions as we move ahead the memorial stones installed in memory of people who have attained samadhi are called as nishadis and the features of nishadi in the jain literature if you look at it in bhagavati aradhana shivakoti acharya has indicated features of nishadi in seven different prakrit uh, shlokas and it clearly vividly describes the directions in which a nishadi should be installed orientation in terms of geographical directions the kind of results obtained by installing the nishadi in a particular location these are the kind of details that you find in uh, bhagavati aradhana moving on n- now let's try to have a quick snapshot of lekana uh, memorials in karnataka in this one slide then let's move on to its details hundreds of nishadis are found across the breadth and width of karnataka and uh, they are found in huge numbers at shravana belagola koppala and various other parts of karnataka particularly in shravana belagola we can find more than 250 selekana memorials or nishadis bulk of them being found on the chandragiri hill owing to the huge number of selekana memorials probably selekana uh, in shravana belagola 
can also be called as the sandekana capital of the world is what i feel because at a single place if you are able to find more than 250 memorials or a sandekana inscriptions then you can just imagine the kind or the way in which sandekana has been adopted and how it has been documented and recorded in that particular place moving on koppala there are about 70 plus nishadis that were founded koppala in 1992 the koppala has a has a fort on a, on a hill on a hill up the the fort fell down and its walls fell down when it collapsed when people start started looking into those stones that that had fallen down they found that many of them were inscriptions or we had many other details and when they tried to decipher it further so it was so surprising that there were 70 sallekana memorials of the nishadis that were found at this single place and all these 70 plus nishadis have been documented by our uh, very own hampa nagraj ji sir who is along with us today then moving on in dharwad a karnataka university has a museum called as Karnat- kannada research institute where you have over 40 plus nishadis being preserved at a single place moving on here is one more very interesting thing that has happened about the past 5 to 6 years there is this district called haveri district very close to dharwad it's again a north karnataka district where you can find close to 80 nishadis and one of my very good friend a researcher ravikumar navalgund he is unearthed about 50 nishadis of the sallekana memorials within a span of 3 years during his course of his doctoral research and there are nishadis are also found in different parts of karnataka just to name a few like mysore chamrajnagar kurg belagavi or belagam bidar shivamogga and many others then what what does the nishadi contain you might be wondering it would you would be feeling it's just a sallekana memorial what what more would you find it you if you have uh, if you go through it you will be really astonished the language in which it, it the nishadis have been inscribed then the period the period of the in which the nishadis have were installed the period around which the uh, the person attained uh, samadhi then the person's profile means to say it could be a acharya a muni aryaka a king queen general merchant shravaka or shravika or, or a lay woman then the guru parampara that is the lineage of the gurus of the teachers to which the person or the set of people they followed and they belong to then the content of nishadi some of them are very simple and straight forward and re- reveal very very basic details of the person who attained samadhi and some of them gives you very interesting details you will find them as you move along it gives an account of the king's area of the kingdom their administration the actual feelings of people that prevailed at the moment when a person died to take up sallekana patent samadhi about the person's economic and social status description of jainism and its glory admiration of people towards the person who undertook sallekana then what are the what are the kind of i mentioned it gives you details about guru parampara you know we we, have, we very often we keep mentioning the term sangha sangha is used to indicate a group of monks yes a subset of sangha are also called are further divided as gana gacha anvaya bhali vibhava and usually the in the descending order and the name of sangha is attributed to the head of the group a detailed study of these nishadis indicate the various categories of jaina asceticism there are divisions that have arisen over a period of time the sangha gana gacha anvaya bali or vibhava they do not indicate any hierarchy instead it is just a categorization to indicate the tradition to which the ascetics belong what are the names of different sanghas and all these that are found among the sanghas you find the names of mula sangha nandi sangha dravida sangha yapaniya sangha navilura sangha and so on of which mula sangha has been mentioned the most then when it comes to gana you find uh, mention of sanviga gana desi gana dravida gana balatkara gana kanuru gana kal- kalogra gana kaleya gana nandi gana look at the names the jaina names of the ganas the ascetic order kumudi gana deva gana surastha gana balagara gana sena gana punnaga vruksha mula gana look at the names of which desi or deshiya gana they have been mentioned the most then gacha pustaka gacha it is also called as postaka gacha vakra gacha tintrini gacha saraswati gacha i am just giving some of the names of which desi ganas pustaka gacha is very popular in the inscriptions 
ದೆನ್ ಅನ್ವಯ ಕುಂದ ಕುಂದಾನ್ವಯ ಅರುಗಳಾನ್ವಯ ಶ್ರೀಧರಾನ್ವಯ ಶ್ರೀನಂದಾನ್ವಯ ನವಿಲ್ ಗುಂದಾನ್ವಯ ಹನಸೋಗೆ ಅನ್ವಯ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದೆಮ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ನೇಮ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದಿ ಪ್ಲೇಸಸ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ದಮ್ ಹನಸೋಗೆ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ವಿಲೇಜ್ ನೌ ವಿಚ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅ ತ್ರಿಕೂಟಾಚಲ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಮೈಸೂರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ಅ ರಿಮೋಟ್ ವಿಲೇಜ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಇಫ್ ಎ ಮುನಿ ಸಂಘ ಹ್ಯಾ ವಾಸ್ ನೇಮ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಹನಸೋಗೆ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಇಮ್ಯಾಜಿನ್ ಹೌ ಡೀಪ್ಲಿ ವಾಸ್ ಜೈನಿಸಮ್ ರೂಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ರೀಜನ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ತಲಕೋಲಾನ್ವಯ ಗಂಗಾನ್ವಯ ಬುಧಾನ್ವಯ ದೆನ್ ಬಳಿ ಇಂಗುಳೇಶ್ವರ ಬಳಿ ಇಂಗುಳೇಶ್ವರ ಬಳಿ ಇಸ್ ಅನದರ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ನಾರ್ದರ್ನ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಬಿಜಾಪುರ್ ವೆರ್ ಯು ಫೈಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ ಬಳಿ ಇಸ್ ನೇಮ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಇಂಗುಳೇಶ್ವರ ವಡ್ಡ ದೇವರ ಬಳಿ ಹನಸೋಗೆ ಬಳಿ ಅಗೇನ್ ಯು ಸೋ ಹನಸೋಗೆ ಅನ್ವಯ ನವ್ ಯು ಸೀಂಗ್ ಹನಸೋಗೆ ಬಳಿ ಪೊತ್ತಗೆ ಬಳಿ ದೆನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ವಿಭವ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೋಧ ವಿಭವ ಮೂವಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ದ ವಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ ಸೊ ನೌ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ದ ನಿಷಧಿಯ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಸೆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾರ್ವಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಹಾವ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೇಔಟ್ಸ್ ಲೇಔಟ್ ಸಮಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಕೋಟಿಂಗ್ ಸಮಟೈಮ್ಸ್ the layout of the temp- of the temple or the tirthankara inscribed over there sometimes gives us indication of the existence of the existence of a temple in the village the deity's posture could be in padmasana khadgasana or kayotsarga the status sometimes you know people who were uh, pretty well off financially they have, we have seen them installing nishadis which are very grand you can see couple of them some of them being very simple then the reasons for taking sallekana upasarga durbiksha that is famine ill health old age snake bite you know there is an inscription in south madurai which mentions the sallekan of a muni called akshay kirti as he was bitten by a snake and someone feels he he or she does not want to live in this futile world a couple of others death of a husband or mother in law or daughter when death is imminent after sustaining injury in the battlefield and to attain salvation and tuberculosis kshaya roga in some inscriptions we uh, in a couple of inscriptions we find the mention of kshaya roga or tuberculosis moving on what are the types of nishadis that you find some of them you find them as padas or feet impressions some of them as inscriptions some of them as a part of a mantapa some of them being part of the pillars being a pillars some of them are called as mudija or mundija pyramidical structure you will see that as we move on the sculptures some we find indications of basadis being constructed as an, a memorial uh, thing then patashala idols dana shala chila kutas kind of then based on the person who attained samadhi it can be they are called as veera nishadi nas mast nishadi and all then you know some of the nishadis the content is inscribed in poetic form they are called as kavya nishadi and you know like in some of these nishadis we find the mention of the poet who composed that particular nishadi or the inscription called as some of their names are nagavarma shridharaya beladeva mallinatha kavi muni samanta badra bhattaraka bokkimayya ganga gangana vidyananda gunavarma jinavallabha mangaraja arhadasa these are all the names of the kavis or the poets who composed the nishadis then they this nishadis let's now try to deep get into the individual nishadis over the next half an hour to 45 minutes you will have a quick glimpse of close to 50 plus nishadis across karnataka like before we start i would like to say see like i mentioned you find hundreds and hundreds of nishadis across karnataka this gives a quick representation or a glimpse of the nishadis and how they are spread across karnataka their formats what are the kind of details that you are able to decipher and get from these nishadis let's move on now nishadi sat shravana balgala like i said shravana balgala has over 270 plus to be more precise it has 271 nishadis and history of shravana balgala i should say it starts with the nishadi you know like we all all know the arrival of badrabahu and we know the inscription which also documents the arrival of badrabahu along with that the nishadi uh, the samadhi of uh, his disciples before that we find another that inscription is of 700 ad which 650 to 700 ad which uh, documents the activities that happened during third century bc third or second century bc before that there is another nishadi which starts as early as 
400 AD. We will try to understand them uh, very soon, and it continues up to 14th century. And uh, the, de the death by samadhi is very popular during the early stages among the munis. Later on, in Shravan Balabha's Nishadi, it also gives you disciples of lay disciples, the details of lay disciples or shravakas. The profile of people who have attained samadhi here are uh, the munis or uh, matajis or aryaka, the people of royal families, kings, queens, ministers, generals, householders, the lay disciple shravaka or shravika or a female lay disciple, people who held different positions in the society or in the kingdom, merchants, local officials, warriors, local accountants. And like I mentioned earlier, bulk of the collections at Shravan Bhargala, they are found at Chandragiri, that is a smaller hill, followed by the Indragiri hill, that is a larger hill. Like I mentioned, there are 271 inscriptions. Among all, this is the oldest of all the Nishadis, oldest Kannada inscription as well, that is found on Chandragiri hill. It, it, is, it has old Kannada inscriptions along with a few Sanskrit and Prakrit letters. Its lippi is said to belong to Shatavahana and Adi Ganga period. It, it's, it is said to be a, about 400 AD. And this is the oldest inscription in Kannada. And as well as I said, the first inscription that has been documented, the oldest, that finds the mention of the term Nisidi, not Nishadi, Nisidi, not Sha, it is Sir. Then the title and profile of the person who attained Samadhi here is Gunabhushita Muni. Like I mentioned, it gives you details about uh, Guru Parampara, it gives you details about Sandhika Gana. This is the only Nishadi related to that Gana. What does it contain? It contains the details about a king, a person called Ulada, who was the Jain king of the region below Shravana Balagodas Hilak. He belonged to Sandhika Gana. He installed the Nishadi of Gunabhushita Muni. Means to say, look at the details that it is giving you. It gives you the details about who ruled the, the Shravana Balagoda area in 400 AD. And where is this located? You know, like as soon as you enter the Chandragiri Hill, you find the Parshanatha temple. Just before that, it, this, you can find this inscription. Then there is one more. You, you, you have all heard about Acharya Pujyapada, who is known for the Shanti Mantra and many other religious works, who, who spent considerable time in Kanakagiri, in the, which is another uh, in, uh, place in the southern Karnataka. There is a 5th century AD Nishadi, which is in the form of a pada. The mantapa that you see over here, and within that you find a pada. That is where it is. There is no inscriptional references, but there are literary sources that indicate that this Nishadi belongs to Acharya Pooja Pada. Uh, the literary source is Devachandra's Rajavali Katasara. And one interesting aspect is this Nishadi was renovated somewhere in 1990s, probably early or mid 1990s. When they removed the pada, below that I found the earthen pot inside which you found ashes. Means to say, after a person attained samadhi, after the person was burnt, the ashes probably would have been put into the earthen pot and, after, and on which the, the pada would have been consecrated or installed. Then we will again come back to Shravana Balagula. Here, we, I just spoke about uh, the arrival of Acharya Badrubahu. So this is one of the oldest Nishadis that mention about the Samadhi of 700 Munis. One Nishadi documenting the Samadhi of 700 Munis. This is the earliest inscription that refers to the migration of North Indian Jains to South India and the role played by Acharya Badrubahu. Its period is around 600 AD, based on the thing. Then the people who attained uh, Samadhi are Muni Prabhachandra and 700 Munis. The location of this, this is again, you find this area, I think now you will looking at the image, you will find it uh, a bit familiar with Shravana Balagoda. That is where you find this particular thing, just adjacent to Parshanatha Basadi. And it is in, is in the Sanskrit. It, it's a combination of two inscriptions. One of them, uh, both of them mentions about Badrubhava and one refers to Chandragupta. It mentions the achievement of Bhagavan Mahavir, that is Lord Mahavir, Tirthankara Mahavir. It mentions the Badrabahu Swami foresaw the arrival of famine to Jain for 12 long years and his decision to move down south. Then let's move on to one more place. We would have heard about Halibid and Belur. This is a Nishadi inscription in the form of a pillar. It is a Kamba Nishadi that is found in front of Parshanatha Basadi in Halibid. Its period is 14th October 954 AD. It belongs to the Ganga king Immadi Bhutaga. The lineage, the Muni Parampara is about Konda Kundanvaya 
or Kundakundanvaya. The script of the inscription is old Kannada, inscribed on three faces, two of them you see over here. And it is the profile of the person is a Muni whose name was Moni Bhattara. It is a it gives you details about Gunasagara's disciple, Gunachandra Bhattara, Gunachandra Bhattara's disciple, Moni Bhattara, and again a disciple of Abhayanandi Pandita got this done for Moni Bhattara. Means to say, the reason I'm giving you these details, look at the three different lineage, the hierarchy of monkhood, Gunasagara, Gunachandra, Moni Bhattara. So that is the entire lineage it is trying to give you. This was, and again, it was it further details, details about, it was engraved in by a person called Sridharaya. And it has, on the second phase, it even clearly states, says about the good qualities about Moni Bhattara and his courageousness and how he tried to pacify the people. And it further says, it, the inscription based on its, uh, the way it has been written, grammatically, it is, it is written in Utpala Mala Vratta. Means as I told you, things are there in poetic format. This is another example. Then again, we'll come back to Shravana Balgoda. At the moment you enter Shravana Balgoda's Chandragiri Hill, and when you enter this entire complex, you find this particular uh, pillar. You know, like many of them, they call it as Kugya Brahma Deva Pillar. Kamba. Uh, Kamba means pillar. In, in, Kamba in Kannada means it's a pillar. And in the top, you find a deity there. Many of them are of the uh, believe that it is a Brahma Deva. It is not. It is a Sarvanaksha. And in fact, this is an example of a Kamba Nishadi. Probably a first instance of a Nishadi installed on a Brahma Stamba. It gives a detailed account of King's Valor and his conquests. And uh, it has uh, the inscription is uh, carved on three faces, which I have sh shown here in the images on two faces. It, it is around 974 AD. And it is again a good example of the Ganga workmanship. What does it contain? It contain it speaks about a king, the Ganga king, king called as Marasimha. Uh, it gives details about his valor, and it further says, when did he decide to undertake Salekana? Means to say, after carrying all the work, one year later, he relinquished his sovereignty, and by observing Salekana, oh, for three days he attained samadhi. In the presence of his guru Ajita Sena Bhattaraka at Bankapura. Friends, one important aspect to note over here is this particular inscription is found at Shana Balagada, but he attained Samadhi at a place called Bankapura, which is again a, in a, a North Karnataka district of Haveri. Means to say, a person would have attained Samadhi elsewhere and the Nishadi would have been in, uh, installed elsewhere. These kind of uh, examples are also seen and this is one of the live examples. Then here is another thing, which all these while you found a mantapa of uh, Pujapada with a Pada and look at this particular inscription where you have a Kamba. This is, this is a, the oldest example of a Kamba Nishadi with Mantapa. This is an inscription of Rashtraputa King Indira 4 which belongs to 982 AD. You know, this is again found on the smaller hill at Shavana Bhargada, that is the Chandragiri hill. What are the important details over here? What is the uniqueness before we get into the details? One is the oldest example of a Kamba Nishadi in, Manta, in Mantapa, probably. This is the this might be one of the oldest references to the game polo. How is that? That is this uh, we can conclude that based on the, its content. It praises about the Rashtrakuta King Indira 4, gives a vivid description of his attainments and achievements, describes his imitable skills in playing the game polo. Look at it. It records his death in 982 AD at Shravana It explains his family lineage. And it further gives details about the titles he had, couple of them just to see. Pratta Kandarpa, Raja Marthanda, Chalada Ankara, Chalada Aggadi, Kirti Narayana, Birara Bira. Look at the names that, that existed. Look at the kind of details you are able to get this in this particular inscription. Moving on, we have all heard about Kurg. Kurg has very few uh, Jaina um, uh, followership at present. There is a group of three temples that have been well protected by the Archaeological Survey of India. You can see them in the row over here. Of these, six of them are Salekana memorials. And uh, the last one is what I'm going to just speak about. It is the Nishadi of a Jaina monk called Gunasena and other Shravakas. Its period is around 1064 AD. It, 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 it mentions about his Guru Parampara as Nandi 
Sangha, Pushpa Sena Pratindra, it praises his good qualities and indicates that he attained Samadhi in the year 1064 AD. Moving on, again back to Shravan Barbara, you know, like we found about one inscription. Now you see two inscriptions within a mantapa, a column where it has been um, carved very nicely. And it is an inscription about um, a combination of uh, uh, a Kamba Nishadi plus a Mantapa Nishadi. And uh, it again mentions about the Guru Parampara, that is Pustaka Gacha of the Desiya Gana of Mula Sangha. And this was installed by Ganga Raja, who was the general of the Khoisala King Vishnu Vardhana in memory of his mother Pochi Kabbe in 1122 AD. And his teacher, Shubha Chandra Siddhanta Deva, 1123 AD. Furthermore, in Gangaraja, it elaborates the religious environment that existed in Echi Ganka's family, that is Pochi Kape, who undertook Salekana in her family. What was the religious environment that prevailed when she undertook Salekana? Then the next one is Shubha Chandra Siddhanta Deva. It speaks about the great qualities of Shubha Chandra, the Muni Shubha Chandra, his pious religious conduct, his gurus and lineage and so on, uh, friends. Uh, this is called, this is again in the Shrana Bhagavad In a yogi temple, you find this. This is called as Muni Mallishena Maladhari Deva's inscription. This is, you can see this. It is again an example of a Kamba Nishadi and a Kavya Nishadi. And it clearly mentions who wrote the Kavya, whose name was Mallinata, his title called as Madana Maheshwara. It gives the lineage of Jaina monks. And one particular point, look at this particular second image. You find a small kind of a piece of uh, cloth or some kind of a thing that is there. This is called as yoga patti. Based on the tradition that we have seen with many inscriptions, researchers have come to a conclusion. The presence of a yoga patti in this in a nishadi means to say the person who attained samadhi was a bala brahmachari. And this has been very meticulously carved across all the three sides. It has around 255 lines. And who carved it? It was carved by a uh, the sculptor, his name was Gangachari, who, who, who was again titled as Birdu Ruvari Mukathilaka. Look at the title. Then, moving on, what does it contain? Now, this we are coming to a very important stage. I, I'll uh, uh, explain this in, in, the, in this and on to the next uh, slide as well. It first indicates that Jaina, the Jaina monk or the Muni Mallishena Maladari Deva, he attained Samadhi in 1129 AD. It has about seven stanzas speaking about his greatness and his qualities. It gives a detailed account of the people who are present and how he undertook the Salekana Vidhi as per the Jaina Agamas following the Ratnatraya Marga. Ratnatraya Marga is what that is again to be noted here. Moving on, what are the additional details it gives you? It gives an account of Badrabahu, Acharya Badrabahu, his greatness and how his disciple Chandragupta looked after his guru. It gives the importance of Acharya Samantha Badran's three stanzas. It indicates details of his victory over the scholars at Madhva, Sindhu Desha, Thakka Vishaya, Kanchi Puram, Vidisha and other places. It also mentions about the importance of Simmanandi and Vajranandi Munis. It speaks about the importance of Akalanka Muni, his greatness and his victory over the Buddhist group of scholars and their goddess Thara Bhagavati. It speaks about the influence of Mati Sagara Muni, a Muni, how he used to defeat the poets, scholars and others in the Chalukyan capital. And how the Chalukyan king Jayasimha worshipped the, this particular Muni. It also speaks about a few other Munis called the Shanti Deva Muni, Ajita Sena Yati and others. It also gives details of Jain scholars such, such as Shanti Nata Pandita, Padmanabha Pandita and others. Moving on, we have all uh, heard about the Hoysala kings. We have heard about Hoysala king Vishnu Vardhana. And uh, you know, this is, these are uh, two inscriptions which are uh, related to Machi Kabbe and Shantala. You know, if you look at this, these are like group of three inscriptions in one mantapa and one inscription in another mantapa, a group of four inscriptions, which documents the samadhi of four different people. It is again, these are all Kavya Nishadis, Nishadi of a minister, Nishadi of a Dandanayaka, records the construction all of, like I mentioned, it gives you details about Patashala. One of the inscriptions records the construction of Pata Shala or a reading room in the memory of the person who attained Samadhi. And again, you know, one particular uh, important aspect over here is the queen, the Vaisala queen Shantala, she undertook Salekana at a place called Shiva Gange, at a nearby place near Shonambalgada in Tumkur district under the presence of her guru. 
it gives details about her uh, guru her guru parampara and her the who were the present her uh, her mother after coming back from there she says i cannot bear the loss of my daughter i want to undertake sallekana so she undertook sallekana and she dies after about 30 or 33 days it documents that like i mentioned look at the period 1131 ad it, it speaks about machi kabbe apart from shantala who was a shravika who was a queen's mother baladeva who was a dandanayaka or a general singimayya who was a minister prabachandra siddhanta devi deva who was again a muni and the period 1131 1139 two of them and again in 1145 ad then this is another uh, set of inscriptions again you find out at shravanabhadra you find the mantapas over here inside these mantapas you find three nishadi three inscriptions and these um, uh, mantapas incidentally coincidentally are also called as mahanavi mantapa and again this is an example of a kamba and a mantapa nishadi it documents the samadhi of uh, three muni sri devakirti yati 1163 ad nayakirti deva muni 1176 ad and shubhachandra mahayati 1313 ad what does the in- reveal it indicates that it was installed by hulla who was the treasurer of the hoysala king narasimha one in memory of devakirti yati next one it indicates that it was installed by nagadeva a minister in memory of sri nayakirti deva muni third one it indicates that it was installed in memory of shubhachandra mahayati and these are popular for their artistic carvings on the nishadis and mantapa and on and the mantapa during the probably this is one of the first nishadi mantapa that was built during the hoysala regime then this is one of the very recent uh, nishadis that were discovered maybe about one and a half two years back it document in uh, shimoga very i mean at in shimoga district that is at hombuja or honcha it mentions about kalyana chalukya general shri bomma shanti deva it it is the pro- it doesn't it names a lady it, it indicates the names of a lady but it is been like worn out and it is a 12th century inscription the next one this is again found at a village called harakere in front of a nandi temple just in the open air this was found and again it indicates uh, the profile as a shravaka his name is not available his guru parampara is nemi deva muni and it is it belongs to around 12th century ad that is around hoysala period moving on this is another very interesting inscription nishadi that you find in uh, hombuja you would have seen a basadi at hombuja with a very artistically carved uh, temple that is called as pancha basadi within the premises of the pancha basadi you find this this indicates the samadhi of two munis called as akalanka akalanka deva and pushpa sena and the guru parampara over here is mula sangha desiya gana trayvidya deva is one guru another one is balachandra deva who was a disciple of vadiraja muni of the nandi gana it has two levels structure if you see in the top you find the tirthankara above that you find the mukkode the moon and sun the chamaras and the munis you find here in the back you see over here these are all the munis holding the pinchis in their hand and what does it uh, reveal it gives a vivid description of pushpa sena muni and akalanka muni their qualities it further describes how pushpa sena muni con- conducted himself during the sallekana vrata how, how was his state of mind the tranquil mind who was always chanting panchanamokara and attains samadhi smiling further he handed over his monkhood padavi what do you say the acharya padavi to gunasena siddhanta who was the muni of the pancha basadi and he attained samadhi on ananda samvatsara pushya shukla bahula tuesday so it clearly gives a period when it happened it also describes about akalanka muni who had jain virtues instilled in him and accepted the vow of salekana with a pure mind and attained samadhi and again it mentions the period as ananda samvatsara marga shira shukla purnima like i mentioned the period is around 1216 ad here is another inscription which me and one my friend uh, ravi kumar we had been to a village in haveri district on our field work look at the location i deliberately tried to give, put this particular image look at how the location where you f- we found this inscription in the village in the midst this is a the background you see is a uh, basaveshwara temple this is in front of a basaveshwara temple where we found this particular thing it is the the profile of a person over here i mean you know like what you see over here we actually it was almost covered till here just below the uh, where the inscription started 
we had to dig it through and this is where we were able to reach through in the next one one and a half hour after with the permission of the villagers and this is how we were able to discover this nishadi and this is bappi shetty bappi shetty is the person who is a warrior who is the head of a village and uh, his muni like it says it was preached by his muni 6 ad it is again written in poetic format again a kavya nishadi in which bappi shetty undertook salekana it it clearly explains how calm and composed he was while he undertook salekana it further explains his words during the salekana process it goes as below bappi shetty donated all his wealth in, uh, to the needy before undertaking salekana after donating his wealth with a very balanced and happy mind by recalling the parama jineshwara and chanting panchapada it's not namokara mantra namokara mantra is otherwise mentioned here as panchapada he by renouncing his home wife children friends all his wealth and overcoming all the aspirations and listening to the panchapada and assuming himself as a jina he you know like it clearly describes he questions is there any other religion like jainism where a person at Uh, uh, attains samadhi in such a great way and states that this is the greatness of jainism look at how jainism is been vividly explained over that further he says a person with a focused mind can only be nearer than to the jina the sarvagna or sarvagya by practicing salekana moving on here is another thing we have all heard about badami the badami caves the jaina caves which are in the topmost uh, steps over there and uh, they the badami caves are said to be belonging to early 7th century ad but on the outer walls of the cave here is one thing which not many of you would have uh, observed even if you have gone to badami this is a nishadi wherein you find a tirthankara and a lady who is a shravika who undertook uh, salekana it is around 12th century ad this is a very significant nishadi because it is on the outer walls of a cave in uh, karnataka and uh, the name of the person who attained nishadi i mean samadhi is jakkave and uh, further on here is another thing this is very very interesting nishadi friends i'll tell you why this particular nishadi is called as karma devaru the god of the karmas you'll not believe what you see in the background just above this this is about 2 2 feet i should say just above that on three sides you have the kind of a temporary wall i should say mud wall and above that you have a small covering and it's in the open air and the hindus worship this particular deity as karma devaru it is found in the middle of the shrubs in an open field at a village called kunchuru in hiragarur taluk of haveri district this is again another by my friend uh, ravi kumar navalgun whom i mentioned earlier look at the structure it has three particular uh, steps it has a mantapa two women who are uh, holding uh, uh, folding their hands you find the jina below that you find the shruta pita again to uh, one woman sitting over here with folded hands you find the muni with the pinchi all those details and furthermore you know like one particular point to be noted in the bottom you see there a slight it is broken over there probably it's a mantapa it indicates probably the person who attained samadhi might have been taken in the procession inside the mandapa and then the nishadi would have uh, been installed and when it comes to its uh, name it calls it indicates the person called as malla who is called as nal prabhu nal prabhu means nadu means the the area where he might have been the head of a certain area it speaks about his qualities it says who uses word such as jina pada padma uh, padmasa dharma samyak ratnakara kulopayonidi these are the qualities that indicates about him the indicate the usually you know like most of the inscriptions many inscriptions not most many inscriptions start with the word shrimad parama gambhira syadva damoga lanchanam jiya treloke natasya that is how the most of the jaina inscriptions start whereas this particular inscription starts with namah siddebya and the word namah siddebya uh, is seen only in the adi kadambas of devagiri inscriptions further on you know like this is very interesting again we have seen about in indian society we have seen about the sas bahu conflicts we have seen about the mother in law daughter in law conflicts which is seen across in india and world over 
and uh, you know like but look at this particular inscription you know this is the nishadi of a mother in law and sister in law this is in the premises of a shantinath basadi in a place called nitturu in gubbi taluk of tumkur district it is a 12th century inscription and the guru parampara it indicates is moola sangha desiya gana pustaka gacha kunda kunda anvaya it indicates the samadhi of a woman called malave who happens to be the mother in law of a lady called chaudi akka malave undertook uh, salekana due to old age this is where the next part comes the interesting part of this inscription owing to the death of her mother in law chaudi akka says i cannot live without my mother in law malave i want to undertake salekana and she undertakes salekana look at the kind of family values how it was look at the how great the jain family system was in those days during the 12th century ad in karnataka then this is another thing which many of you would have seen at shravanabhagala and uh, when you are climbing up the bigger hill at uh, shravanabhagala and you know like uh, many of you many of them would have seen this particular piece that you see over there in the top would have said this is adinath bhagwan and his 100 sons or uh, many of the things many ways the people interpret but when you look at this particular uh, inscription i mean a uh, carving and in between you find some inscriptions also that are uh, written over there and uh, so many of them they clearly indicate based on those wordings they say this could be attributed to a nishadi or a salekana memorial however that is still a matter of debate i am telling you it in very code in quotes that it is still a matter of debate the top portion over on the same boulder you see in the bottom you see the nishadis over here the carvings over here these are again these are the engraved images of munis along with the inscriptions these indicate these are about five different munis who have attained the samadhi who are the munis padmanandi deva in 1256 ad dharmabhushana deva simmanandi acharya hema chandra kirti deva kirti deva who was a disciple of bona kirti deva 14th century means to say in one particular boulder you find five different nishadis from 1256 ad to 14th century ad means over a period of 150 years then this is very interesting again here you find three different uh, nishadis inscriptions which are found in the open fields in the middle of a field at a village called kadakola in again in haveri district it belongs to, like the first nishadi belongs to a person called as chandaya which is around uh, belongs to 13th century and his guru parampara is indicated as nandi bhattaraka it indicates the samadhi of her then the next one is of nishadi of peggade somayya which again belongs to 1231 ad it, it it's again the period of yadava sevuna simmanandi of devagiri it's it's again in kannada and again the guru parampara over here nandi bhattaraka please note the names of the guru parampara i am mentioning in this and the next slide the first and the second one it is nandi bhattaraka the third one it is a nishadi of peggade somayya peggade you have heard about heggade heggade means the head of a village head it indicates to a shaka year 1189 that is around ad 1267 again this person is a shravaka again the guru parampara nandi bhattaraka deva see all the three then it indicates uh, the samadhi of that person the next three again this is again found in a neighboring village the first one which we found was at kadakola village in the open field the next one is at herur village two of them were found in the middle of the fields and third one is found in the same village the first nishadi over here all the three are of women lay women that is shravika or shravaki it explains the proceedings that took place during uh, salekana about a lady called kanakave and how what she said after undertaking salekana you know what she says salekana is such a vow wherein a person will have to renounce one for gaining the other when she was undertook when she undertook salekana she was very calm and composed undisturbed with the sole mind of gaining spirituality spiritual pressure by undertaking salekana even when her family members were telling her they cried and they pleaded her please come back don't go, leave away and go away she said no i am very determined and she was very calm composed those are the details it gives the situation that prevailed at that time the next one is about nandi bhattaraka the previous one is nandi bhattaraka and again this is nandi bhattaraka 
and uh, it indicates uh, the samadhi of a lady who was nagavi's daughter then moving on another nishadi was found in the premises of a hanuman temple a hindu temple it indicates the samadhi of a lady called chandi gaudi it is again 1279 ad who was a wife who was the wife of somanath sirimaya gauda it clearly defi- defines uh, her f- husband's name now you looked at these through three uh, slides you looked at six inscriptions what do they in- indicate all of them belong to the same family belongs to 6th, 13th century ad it indicates the the throws light about the jain way of life that existed in that period and it indicates that they were the staunch followers of jainism most of them except for the last one chandi gaudi which i mentioned over here the last one that except that all of them their guru was nandi bhattaraka and means to say these the people of the families were they were the strict followers of jainism the way they renounce the life the it in, clearly indicates the influence of jaina ascetics on the day to day life of the people and how closely they the jain shravakas were closely related to the religion and hence again the researcher ravi kumar he has called this family as the mahamarana family mahamarana kutumba moving on you know like we spoke about uh, nishadi inscriptions the pillars and uh, mantapas now let's get into this look at this we have all been to karkala with bahubali idol and all and you find up um, there are about 18 temples and this is one particular interesting temple you know like which is called as nishadi basadi why because inside the temple it doesn't have a tirthankara image or any of the yaksha or yakshi image instead it has nishadi inside it that is why it is called as nishadi basadi and um, all the three inscriptions it indicates the samadhi of six different ascetics who are called as hemachandra bhattaraka shri kirti devaru shruta muni charu kirti pandita deva pujya pada swami and narendra kirti deva it further indicates the ascetics who preach sanekana to these people who attend uh, samadhi undertaking sanekana they are who what are the names of the gurus kumara chandra bhattaraka vimala suli sori bhattaraka siddhanta deva charu kirti dharma bhushana bhattaraka and maha kirti means to say you can and the, when it comes to its period based on its culture and other patterns architectural pattern it is concluded to be around 1350 ad look at the uniqueness a temple dedicated to the nishadis which is called as nishadi basadi which indicates or gives the proof of attaining of uh, samadhi by following uh, sallekana and this is again we'll come back to uh, kanakagiri which we saw about acharya pujya pada you know like the couple of nishadis and this particular nishadi is about uh, muni uh, called uh, as lalita kirti bhattaraka who belong to mula sangha desiya gana konda kundame pustaka gacha hanasoge badi i mentioned about hanasoge earlier remember and uh, it is installed in 1355 ad you know like i coined this term as selfie nishadi because we are all known for taking selfies these days and here the muni installed the nishadi before undertaking selekana he installed his own nishadi okay and look at the sculpture over here you find a tirthankara you find a brahma yaksha on the horse you find uh, the munis and the and the uh, aryakas you find the disciples and below this you find the nishadi this is how this is installed on a boulder or a rock moving on this is again a very interesting thing you see in the header i have used this particular image deliberately this is again Uh, a place called sanguru it is called a sangamas nishadi who was a dandanayaka or the chief of the army in the vijayanagar kingdom of saduva king saivannarasa the period is around 1396 ad 23 december 1396 it indicates the profile of person nine people two men one of them is a general and other his son four wives of the general his father and his brothers three brothers single nishadi single inscription indicating the samadhi or attaining of Uh, samadhi by practicing sallekana of nine different people look at this culture the architecture how richly this has been carved in three different parts again in the top you find the further more details then moving on here is another thing at shrona balagola this is again a combined kavya nishadi about a muni called as shrutamuni which belongs to a period of around 1432 ad 
this commemorates the death of a jaina teacher or a jaina muni called as shruta muni and the composer of this particular inscription is a sanskrit poet called as mangar raja furthermore the reason i picked this up look at the period of this inscription 1432 ad even then it indicates about the migration of badrabahu muni it again explains the detail characteristics of chandragupta it gives a very detailed account of different munis and acharyas that existed in the period it gives a background of the situation that led to the construction of a temple in the premises of within within shravanabalagola town called as nagara jinalaya which you can find even now look at the kind of interesting details each of these nishadis uh, unveil then this is again you know like there is a place called gerusappa in the coastal uh, district of uttarakhand district there is, i'll again tell you one of the other reasons why i picked this up this is a this is something around the 31st january 1405 again the kingdom is saluva king sahivand narasa it indicates two women who are queens one is shantala other one is malli abbarasi you can see both of them being sitting over here in the second image on the right with folded hands the muni preaching uh, them you find the kamandala here you find the nishadi here you find uh, you find the pinchi here you find the shruta pita over here again you find the tirthankara over here see in the seated position in padmasana and again you find a slope proof the reason i am telling you this like i said sometimes it might indicate the existence of the temple the structure of the temple you know at gerusappa we, we find a chaturmukha basadi which has a sloped roof again you find a slope proof over here probably i'm not telling very clearly but probably this might be an indication of that moving on here is another uh, nishadi this is another set of inscript uh, de in interesting details this is at a village uh, at a basadi called as hire basadi in hardwali village of batkal taluk in uttar kannada district of karnataka again a coastal kannada district it was uh, erstwhile capital of uh, saluva kings which was also called as sangeetapura and the period is 1429 ad again it's in kannada it indicates the salekana of a muni called as manika sena who attained samadhi on july 2nd 1429 uh, what does it speak it speaks about sangeetapura its kings how they were benevolent to their subjects it speaks about the monks who were present at sangeetapura further it also indicates that the jaina monk Ma manika sena who was a guru of another muni called as sanga prabhu he expressed his, his desire to undertake salekana then it was conveyed to the king after a brief discussion a decision was made to go ahead with the religious ritual on an auspicious day and after 33 days of initiating his uh, bhas fast he breathes his last on july 2nd 1429 then his disciple muni sanga prabhu that is manika sena's disciple muni sanga prabhu after attending the last rites of the guru installed this inscription look at the kind of details it re reveals that it was discussed with the king they decided an auspicious date to undertake this alekana uh, vow then this is another lay woman i told you this is at a place called harave which is around 2 kilometers from kanakagiri it is a small mandapa in the premises of adinatha basadi and it has again three parts uh, contains a padmasana in uh, jina in padmasana and a uh, few other details it reveals the samadhi of a shravaki whose name was uh, kriya somai on 11th october 1486 then this is another in we are almost coming to an end like look at this particular thing this is a i happened to visit this place around 15 uh, days ago just a week ago last uh, saturday you know this particular place it looks like a small hill yes on that you find a mantapa and this is again a hill so it is called as betta and on that you find all the padas or the feet impressions being in, in, inscribed over there hence it is called as pada betta okay betta means again a hill on that you have five ins uh, ins this is located on the outskirts of a place called as gudi bande in chikbalapur uh, um, district which is about uh, 90 92 kilometers from uh, bangalore it houses a mantapa within which you find one of the the mantapa that you see over here within that you find this particular uh, carving and, uh, and it has inscriptions engraved along with the pada and all of them are salekana inscriptions what do they reveal the first inscription it it is a pada nishadi in kannada which uh, the period is 23rd april 1782 which is a, the name of the person is akala jiya 
who was a disciple of look at the names i am moving i am speaking the words you you will see at the end you will be able to connect akada jiya who was a disciple of lakshmi sena bhattaraka he attained samadhi at karmakshaya bhumi and this was installed by sami setti the second one again it's a padanishadi antakala jiya jaya was the name of the person antakala jaya was a disciple of lakshmi sena bhattaraka he attained samadhi at karmakshaya bhumi then the third one again you see here the it is a padanishadi it just mentions about muni called as bahubali devaru the fourth one it again is a uh, corresponds to 23rd april 1782 again it is a padanishadi it mentions about rushaba sena devaru name of a muni who was a disciple of lakshmi sena bhattaraka attained samadhi at karmakshaya bhumi the fifth one it indicates a shravaki or a shravika again it's a nishadi in uh, padanishadi in kannada the name of the person was payakka the pa- shravika or shravaki's name at indi- at indi- and it indicates payakka was a disciple of lakshmi sena bhattaraka attained samadhi at karmakshaya bhumi friends what did we get from all of these five these are four out of five inscriptions mentions about lakshmi sena bhattaraka who is this lakshmi sena bhattaraka just 60 kilometers away from uh, gudibande there is this place called penugonda where there existed a lakshmi sena bhattaraka pita or the seat now the same uh, is been uh, seen in uh, narsimha rajpura in narpura means to say you can find the influence of lakshmi sena bhattaraka among all of them and it further calls the place as karmakshaya bhumi karmakshaya bhumi means killing of your karmas that is why it is called as karmakshaya bhumi it is clearly mentioned in the inscriptions among all of them two of them are shravakas one is a shravika or a and the uh, two of them are munis then moving on you have heard about uh, swadhi jain mat or the sonda jain mat popularly known as batta kalanka jain samsthana mat on the outskirts of sonda you find a place where um, the all the batta rakas or the munis who attained samadhi all of them have been uh, their uh, salekana memorials have been uh, installed and you know like we have seen the pada nishadis but look at these the one in the bottom you find the padas over here one the second one it's a bit different an arch kind of enclosure within that in the open air a pillar then this one a pada you see a pillar small pillar a mantapa and now the gates have been um, uh, set up over there look at the different forms of pada nishadi again over here and most of the profile over here are the past battarakas and the swadhi jain mat uh, over that moving on i mentioned about mudija or mundija to mudabidri you have all gone to mudabidri everyone sees about sees that tribona tilaka chudamani temple that is a thousand pillars temple tribona tilaka chudamani basadi you look at the 18 uh, temples over there and you just straight away go away but here is another interesting thing on a bit of outskirts within uh, in mudabidri these are all been protected in a proper format and these are all in the form of a pyramidical shape and they are in quarter with a quadrilateral base with a multi storied structure in 3 5 or 7 steps these are made up of laterite stones and ta- tapers as you, as you proceed upward and ends up in a shikara as you see in this one the close up image and the height of these varies from around 7 feet and to as high as 15 feet and uh, one can find there are about 21 mudijas or mundijas and they are found in four groups and are fenced in enclosure and are all pro- protected by archaeological survey of india you know one interesting aspect and the period is 5th april 1925 about charukirti samadhi of charukirti battaraka and it is in english we found out about old kannada inscriptions from 400 ad now we have come to 1925 ad means to say over the friends over the past one hour, hour one hour you have heard about close to 45 to 50 sandekana memorial inscriptions spread over a period of 1500 years and uh, for of people of different uh, profiles then here are some of the latest uh, research that have hap- happened from again my friend ravi kumar he has come up with these uh, five different uh, inscriptions that have been another one is a bukkaraya who is a shravaka ad 1376 harihara raya who is a shravaka 15th century again uh, village uh, called ha- Havanagi in Hangal Taluka, Havre district. Again, one is 
Kaligavundi, Ashravaki, 12th century AD, Hire Kanagi village. Then the next one is Savanuru, uh, place that, uh, which is again uh, Muni's Nishadi called as Maladhari Narindra, which again belongs to 12th century. Next one is about Veera Gauda, which is, who is again a Shravaka Gauda, again the head of a village, which is at a place called, village called Matagi in Hangul Taluk of Haveri district. Again, it belongs to 12th century AD. Now, we are com coming to the concluding slide. What does this explain? This, an extensive study of the Nishadi is distributed all over Karnataka. This provides us details of the people belonging to different profiles who attained Samadhi over the centuries. These reveal very interesting and unique details related to the history of Jainism in the region, the Jain way of life, the socio-economic conditions of the community, and other details, like you saw, details about the game polo, the king's skills. Then it helps us comprehend the Jain heritage studies of the region. The very fact that we were able to unearth 70 plus Nishadis in Koppal by our Hampana sir, who unearthed all the details. Just imagine 70 Nishadis being studied, how in-depth the studies have happened about all the 70 Nishadis at one shot. Then the discovery about 50 Nishadis within a period of three years when I, in Havari district by Ravi Kumar, just within a span of three years field work. What does this indicate? This provides ample evidence to say that many more Nishadis may be found in the state if proper field work is undertaken. Thus, Nishadis are not just only historical sources of the practice of Salekana ritual, but also provide details of Jainism and the Jain heritage prevailing from time to time. I hope this gives you a glimpse of the heritage of this uh, Karnataka's Salekana heritage, how Nishadis are uh, found, what is their, uh, what do you say, what are the details you get. This is just a very glimpse, I would say a dipstick check of the Nishadis that are found in Karnataka. I think with this, uh, I think I would like to conclude my presentation. And if you have any questions around where, or where did I get all these details from, these have all been done through reference works. You can find about 44. I, I have to add five more references. There are about 50, 55 uh, references from where I have picked up details right from the references of the work from uh, BL, uh, BL Rice from uh, 1890s to the latest that is just uh, as uh, latest as uh, the past one or two years. That is how we have found uh, all these details and they have been referenced accordingly. And these articles have also been published in my book, uh, Jinayatra, with um, all the details of these uh, inscriptions. I would like to thank uh, uh, Digambarji and Mahasabha for providing me this opportunity to speak on this uh, subject. Thank you. Jai Jinendra. Yakshiji, over to you. Hello. Yeah, it was really an interesting lecture. It was so much, it was full of details, sir. It was really an interesting lecture. So uh, let's have a question and answers round. Uh, those who have a question, please unmute and unmute your mic and please ask your question to Nitin, sir. Or Hampana, sir, you want to start? Uh, you, If you want, you can start with, with your uh, observation, sir. Yeah. Um, do you hear me? Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir, we can hear you, sir. Uh, very nice. Well, uh, we had the pleasure of uh, listening to a very, very, very informative, inspiring uh, PowerPoint presentation by our young scholar, Nitin, H.P. Nitin. And his father, Parshanath, was a, is also a scholar. And Nitin is a worthy son of a worthy father. Well, he has explained in detail the depth and dimension of uh, the concept Salekana. Uh, Salekana is a special future of uh, uh, Jaina philosophy. And then uh, I should bring to your kind notice uh, that uh, one of my students who is now professor and head of the Department of uh, 
Mysore University. He is the director there. And his name is M.G. Manjunath. M.G. Manjunath. Well, he worked on my guidance on the subject of Nishidi. And he collected all almost inscriptions nishidi inscriptions intensive the thesis is well it will be a good subject and a good source book for our nitin to expand whatever he has discovered and studied so far in the course of last three years. Well, we have um, hundreds of Nishidi inscriptions without uh, the sculptures, sculptural details. We have hundreds of uh, uh, Nishidi slabs and all that on the boulders and other places without inscription. So we have to take into consideration both the initiatives with only the sculpture and with inscription and the historical importance of those details that we get from the inscriptions. And one important question that we ask is, why did so many... Um, uh, well, the princess, princesses, soldiers, ministers, and the family members, hundreds of them take the Salekana. Salekana actually is not suicide. One of the uh, very important scholars, uh, T.K. Tukol, Tamanapa Kuvera Tukol, who was the High Court judge of the High Court of Karnataka, and the Vice Chancellor of Bangalore University. He has written a very important book. And the title of the book is Salekana is Not Suicide. Well, the book was, um, uh, rec I mean, it was recommended by Dr. A. Nupadhyay also. It's a very important book. And then, uh, the Salekana or Salehana in Prakrit, Salekana in Sanskrit, has been um, in the Kannada Dravidianized. In Kannada, as uh, our Nitin has it is called in South Kerala. Similarly, Mudipen in Tamil, it is called as Vadakkirithul. Vadakkirithul is the Tamil version of Salekaram. This shows how the native people, the ordinary uh, people, and in their spoken dialect, they have not used the word Salekana, but they have used their own mother tongue word that is either mudinja or mudipu or vadakirutal. And then regarding uh, the two important places in Karnataka are, as explained by our young Pranitin, they are one is Shravanabelgula and the other one is uh, Koppal. Shravanabelgula, the bigger hill is called as Kalvapu. Kalvapu. Please uh, note this word. Kalvapu means to die. Kalvapu means the hill of... Give a similar example from Mohenjadaro. Mohenjadaro also means the hill of the dead. Sammetagiri we can re remember in the north. Sammetagiri, uh, the Siddha Kshetra. Now we call it Sammetagiri is the... Siddha Kshetra, but some scholars who have done some research, they say this is not the original 
Sammetagiri that we now visit is not the original world. The original was at near Gaya, Pudgaya, uh, and uh, there is a hill near the Pudgaya on the world, which suggests that that was the original uh, Sammetagiri. Whatever be that, the details spread over the Karnataka, this shows how the Jaina community at once were present in the rural areas and the urban areas and what made them to submit, Salekana uh, means willing submission to death. And um, there are political reasons, there are domestic reasons, there are religious reasons for uh, submitting themselves to uh, death. I, I will explain. Some are very disturbing, uh, but actually what happened was in the 12th century, well, uh, the Rashakuta dynasty was superseded by the Chalukyas of Kalyana dynasty. It was an imperial dynasty. So much so, the Jains, well, they had their heydays. They are they enjoyed like anything. They were supreme. They were kings. They were princes and princesses and ministers. So everything uh, from a lower level to the official hierarchy to the peak, Jains were supreme, particularly in the period of the Rashtrakuta. Well, once the Rashtrakuta and with them, the Gangas were also there. The Gangas were the Mandalikas or the Samantas. They extended their full support for the flourishing state of the uh, Rashtrakutas. And when the Rashtrakutas, well, who patronized Jainism like anything, when they were superseded, Jains felt that they have lost their great patron. Well, some of the... Um, kings, queens, they went to Jaina religious center like Shavanabil Gula and Kopala. I would rather suggest the title of Kopala inscriptions erected in the year 1999. Kopala inscriptions x-rayed. In that book, uh, I have given all the details of the uh, about 80 important persons of the Ganga dynasty, particularly women. Women, you see, when they felt that their family is not safe, well, uh, they preferred an honorable death. And then in the Abaluru, Abaluru is a place where Jainas were attacked in the 12th century. This I should bring to your notice, those who are listening to that, that Jainas were put into a lot of difficulty and they were harassed, they were butchered, they were murdered, and their families were, the, you see, disturbed with the family life. And then the property, well, uh, it was ransacked, taken away by the other communities. The Shaivas were there. They were. Uh, uh, they felt that these Jains, Jains are so strong. Therefore, in the Abalur, there were many Jain temples, and they uh, well uh, uh, destroyed all those uh, Jain temples. What is disturbing is they attacked Jain monks and Jain nuns. Well, Jain nuns, they were kidnapped well uh, uh, molested and all that very very disturbing all this i am not exaggerating all these we have inscriptional evidences and we have the sculptural evidences the sculptural detail shows how a series of Daina nuns were attacked and they were undressed look how terrible it they were undressed and then uh, the Jaina monks how they were hanged how they were, their heads were chopped off. All these are, we have these cultural details. That, so such things, uh, well, made the Jaina community people uh, submit and die an honorable death. And then Kopanachala was such an important ancient 
ಬೃಹದಾರಾಧನಾ ಮೂಲಾರಾಧನಾ ಭಗವತಿ ಆರಾಧನಾ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಸೇಮ್ ದಟ್ ಆರಾಧನಾ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಟ್ರೀಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಆನ್ ಡೆತ್ ದಿ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಬುಕ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ವೇರ್ ಡೆತ್ ಈಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಸೈಂಟಿಫಿಕಲಿ ಅನಲೈಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಇಲ್ಲಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಇಲ್ಲಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟೀನ್ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೆತ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ ಆಥರ್ ಶಿವಕೋಟಿ ಮುನಿ and he has compressed the 17 types of death into the five types of death the very uh, ordinary death is bala bala marana one should not prefer this it is like committing suicide well the examination results are once announced and those who fail in the examination they well commit suicide some fall from the hill all that is bala mala marana the jainism does not advocate this and still higher than this is bala marana still above this is bala pandita marana above that is pandita marana and the the uh, the highest in the hierarchy is pandita pandita marana usually jain well they take this monk who administers the oath of the lake na so in the holy presence of the image of tirthankar the acharya he administered the oath of the lake but during that period other monks sit by the side of the monk and they explain uh, some stories of the ancient monks who observed and uh, died a very peaceful death one uh, those who take this alle the, the vratha the vratha uh, well they should take the permission of the family member those who go to the monk he will not immediately administer the oath he will ask have you taken the permission of your parent your wife your members of the family with their permission kame mi sabba jeevanam sabbe jeeva kamantume metti me sabba bhuyesu veram majjana academy this we are familiar with uh, this uh, prakrit gatha so that is how uh, the jaina uh salekana vrata a uh, lot of western scholars in this uh, context i should also bring to your notice two important books that is one uh, by written by my friend who died just uh, three months back shadakshar pashet professor shetta inviting death and uh, inviting death is one very important uh, book on the subject which has been translated to vernacular languages also when he has compared the concept of death with uh, other um, religions where the concept of death is explained so this comparative study also shows the importance of the salakna and um, nitin has made an extensive and intensive study and he has brought to our notice uh, uh, it's a power point presentation beautifully is presented uh, at this age i'm uh, 85 years my memory uh, is not that sharp sharp as it was uh, 10 years ago mm, but uh, uh, after listening to the uh, very very um, inspiring lecture by nitin and uh, nitin our uh, young friend i'm very happy that i could participate in this uh, webinar Uh, organized by the digambara uh, our uh, mahasabha thank you very much thank you so much sir 
it was really nice to hear you how beautifully you have described such a topic how graceful it is this is the reason you are called as a life institution you are you are like an ocean of an knowledge sir. thank you so much for that okay uh, so let's move to our question answer round uh, vasuki ma'am have raised her hand ma'am please ask your question uh, chamik dashan ji uh, uh nitin ji one one doubt after seeing yours i got that is uh, one more than one nishidhi stones can be there for the one person or no is it so mm. can you understand might what be, but there might be a couple of instances which might have existed but i don't not see much uh, of those kind of things okay only wherever they take salekna no, there will no. be only one so it can or... be at a different place like you saw at uh, uh. chandragiri hill where uh, the person uh, undertook salekna at a different place in north karnataka at bangapura oh. but his initiative was installed in this particular place at uh, shravanabalapura okay okay uh, that's what that is my doubt whether there will because uh, previously i used to think these stones are and uh, i don't know that it is vishidhi stones i thought it is about the temple how it uh, history of the temple they have written but right. only after studying you will know that uh, with that language one should uh, do research right hello right madam hello right madam we got you ha so all stones like this will be vishidhi stones only no you have to look into the sculpture looking at that we will be able to see many of the nishidhi stones are there with without uh, any inscriptions also like hampana sir uh, said many of them uh, are there only padas you have without anything they might be nishidhi some of them uh, they have inscriptional details also and the uh, sculptures also, also there the multiple kind of salekana memorials okay okay thank you thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you so much ma'am a silvamani jain has raised uh hand please ask your question can you hear us a silvamani jain sir you have to unmute yourself sir silvamani sir you have to unmute yourself हेलो यस सर वी कैन हियर यू अच्छा वेरी गुड नाइस प्रेजेंटेशन नितिन जी थैंक यू एक्चुअली इन विजयमंगलम एंड कोयमत्तूर कोमडी सरसले हु हैज मर्ड दैट इज सामुंडराया हिज सिस्टर्स सलेगना हैज टेकन इन द नाइन्थ अराउंड 6th सेंचुरी हियर इन कोयमत्तूर विजयमंगलम संदरबरबा टेंपल दैट इंस्क्रिप्शन स्टेट्स इज इन द Granda and Tamil Libi. I want to know. In, we have presented almost all the Salegana inscription. You know, all are in Kannada or any language. That is what I want. Oh, some of them are in Prakrit. Some of them have Sanskrit. The first oh, one. Oh, Prakrit. You, Prakrit Libi also. Huh? Yeah. The first inscription which I told you of 400 AD. Huh. It has Prakrit letters. It has Sanskrit letters, but bulk of them are Kannada. Ah, the gotcha. The next one which indicates the arrival of Badrava Homuni. It's all is gotcha. in Prakrit. It is in Sanskrit. Gotcha. अच्छा 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 वेरी गुड थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सो मच सर पीआरपी जेंट सर प्लीज आस्क योर क्वेश्चन सर कैन यू हियर अस राजेंद्र प्रसाद सर आई थिंक यू हैव रेज योर हैंड any other question manish mehta sir yes please unmute your mic sir yes sir. yeah uh, jay uh, jay janendra uh, nitin bhai uh, can you hear me now yes, yes sir can hear you yeah jay janendra i want to just compliment you on such an expertly uh, narrated uh, you know presentation it, it is amazing uh, i have several questions that come to mind but uh, one of which is uh, 
uh, do any of these nishadis mention the age of the deceased person at the time of selection? And and then other questions, I'll just uh, narrate them all and you can uh, choose whichever you, you want yes. to answer or all Not of them. Or whatever. Everything uh, and, uh, gives you the details of the age, sir. Very Maybe one or two or very few, which you might be able to count it in your hands. May you, that might give you the age. Not may, many of them give, gives the age, sir. I see. Okay. Then the other question is, you know, there are so many initiatives all over. Uh, can you say anything about the sculptors who did these initiatives and how gifted they were, who directed them, how they were designed? Uh, is there any such, you know, um, literature available or history about that? The sculptor's name are mentioned in some of them. The person okay. who, who carved it, which I mentioned, uh, some of their names have been there. And uh, then the next is, uh, like, who ask them to do it, usually what happens is the person who got it installed, if their names are mentioned, they are the ones who would have uh, requested the sculptors to enable that. I see. Okay. Then third question is, <laughs> uh, this is all South India. Have you any knowledge of Nishidis in North India and was this also as prolific a practice? Um, because, well, for example, see, in my own family, uh, we have one lady who committed uh, what we call Sati in Rajasthan. Okay, near uh, Chitorgarh, uh, about four or five hundred years ago, and we have a small, similar nishidi uh, put uh, that is erected uh, in her memory, uh, right? So, question is uh, that that uh, are these related in any way? I mean, the, the practice of nishidis uh, across the country, or is it just no, uh, unique to Salekana, South India? Sorry, sir. the practice of Salekana was there across the country, and the Salekana memorials, like we see, you know, like in Jaipur, you see Bhattarajiki Nasia. Oh, okay. Like that. Nasiya oh, I have not seen it. Yeah. Or Nasiya. I see. Like that. They have been called by different names. In Karnataka, they are called as Nishadi or Nisadi. And there okay. you would have called them as Nasiya ji or like that. Nasiya, so, meaning Nishan. Yeah. yeah. The original That's word, the root word would be Nishan. Yeah. Okay. I see. Thank you very much. This is a Thank wonderful you, lecture. And, you know, someday I would like to invite you to speak at a Jaina convention and, you know, just uh, uh, open the minds of, our, uh, you know, youngsters and professionals around the world to such amazing, you know, artifacts that Jainism has. Thank you, sir. I mean, that would be a pleasure, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad yeah. to hear that, uh, sir. I mean, you know, like we have grown up when I, we started our uh, exploration of Jainism though, around 20, 25 years back when I was a kid, I started about uh, hearing about Jaina and all and hearing about Jaina, you know, like, I get ignited. Thank you so much, sir. That's it. That will be a lifetime blessing for me, sir. We'll, we'll be in touch. I will contact uh, Nirmal Bhai and, you know, we'll uh, contact sure, him sir. Uh, shortly. Thank you. Thank Jai Jinendra. Jai Jinendra, sir. Thank you so much, uh, so much, sir. Uh, any other question? Any question? So I would like to just inform the team over here, I mean, the people here, you know, like when we had the Salekana verdict of the Rajasthan High Court, and when the entire team were uh, working, we had about uh, 10 to 12 uh, different uh, petitions that were there at the Supreme Court. And the group of, uh, there were around six to seven petitions from the Digambar Jain Samaj, and which was handled by a group of, uh, uh, I mean, lawyers in, and a couple of scholars. When we did that, I mean, uh, what happened was many of them, they started speaking about, oh, so it is an, the judgment is an attack on the very concept of Salekan and all. That's when I happened to uh, get in touch with few people, thanks to Nirmal Ji and also R.P. Jain Uncle, who connected me with the team who were working on this. That's when I said, it's not just, a, it's nothing as an attack on the Salekana concept. It's all about the practice of Salekana is what it's been questioned here. And wherein I was able to provide quite a bit of these details uh, when the entire... Uh, uh, a petition was filed and which also helped us uh, to some extent. I think I was able to contribute a dot in that entire thing, but I'm really grateful I had that opportunity to work during that particular time. It really helped us in that particular case. Yes, it is. Okay, uh, Narendra sir, you want to say something? Please unmute your mic, sir. Rahul Jain ka mic unmute karenge, Narendra Parsam sir ka. Uh, 
Okay, I, I, I think I got it. Can you hear yes, me sir, now? Yes, we can hear you, sir. Oh, great. Nitin Bhai, that was, um, what can I say? Uh, very impressive, detailed talk ever. And thank you so much. Um, things I learned today was amazing. And thanks to you, of course. Uh, like uh, someone said earlier, I think if possible, can you g send us an excerpt of some, a little bit of this so that we can invite you? Sure, sir. So we can uh, not promote, but I think as Jains, uh, we have to learn more so that we can relate to what we have, why we do certain things. And historical evidence is always proof of what we do, try to do now, and most people don't understand. And I really think your presentation will make, uh, like it was mentioned earlier, younger people, uh, including older people like me, to appreciate and understand what we have. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for expressing your views. Uh, PRP Jen, sir, please unmute your mic, sir. G. Yeah. Jay Jay Lanta, good evening to everyone. Excellent, uh, Nitin Ji, excellent uh, presentation. Uh, I would like to uh, ask two things. Uh, this uh, Salegna Nisha, these are there are many in Karnataka. Very few are in Tamil Nadu. Uh, is there any other place across India such uh, Nishidhi stones are there? Like you just heard Manish Mehta sir very mentioned near Chittorgar, there is one thing. You find one in uh, Jaipur, heart of Jaipur, that is you find at Batarak Jiki Nasiya. They are called in different names sir, but it is there across India. Okay, okay, okay. That is one thing. Secondly, for uh, this Salegna case, you have done an excellent uh, uh, presentation. Can we not have across India all the scholars to sit together, uh, make some kind of a standard operating procedure? There's a procedures and formalities. The question, question what the uh, court is asking, no, we should uh, give it in a standard uh, operating procedure format so that everyone follows the same. Uh, so that we can come out of this uh, case that we, we need to discuss in detail. That's, a, good point. That's a very good point you raised, sir. In fact, when the entire Salekana stay order was got later on, when I just remained in the background, I continued to work and somehow Praman Sagarji Maharaj who was, uh, uh, I mean, con conducting his Chaturmas at Jaipur and he led the entire movement. He got to know about it and invited me over there and we had a very detailed discussion about uh, this particular thing, about creating some documentation. And uh, okay. we, we have uh, prepared a uh, detailed project plan about coming out with Salekana related uh, book with uh, in the Kannada, English and Hindi. That is what was planned. I mean, that was also shared with Maharaji. Very soon, I think, uh, I hope it finds light and we can start working towards that project. That pl project plan has already been submitted uh, to Maharaji. Sir. Uh, thank you so much, Nitinji. Actually, uh, Magazaba should uh, uh, take this because the we, Supreme Court has given only the stay. Uh, the, we, are not, we have not come out of the case. The case right. still... Pending. Just the beginning, rather. Yeah, we if really we will have to work together with all Acharya Sri's, Munisan, uh, including Swedambar. Sir. So we will have to work as a whole Jain community uh, to fight this case in the Supreme Court and come out of it successfully. For that, this kind of uh, uh, seminar, this kind of uh, webinars are uh, very, very useful. And this needs to be compiled. Uh, I would request uh, Mahasabha, uh, Sri Nirmal Sri Sethi uh, to take it forward. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. RP Jain, sir, please unmute your mic. Jai Jinendra. Is it out? We can Uriya. hear you, Uncle Ji. Mic unmute. Karo. Yes, sir, we can hear okay. you. Okay. Jai Jinendra to everybody. I really appreciate it and continue to appreciate Nitin for his work.
for his devotion and dedication to propagate the Jain archaeology and knowledge of Jain history. Uh, as Hampana sir has rightly said, it is the son and the father both are devoted to the subject. Uh, I would really commend Manish Mehta Bhai, Manish Bhai, uh, that Jaina should invite him to make a presentation because that will really in influence the thinking, the thought process of members of the YJA, Young Gents of America and Young Gents Professionals, that they know their history, that they know their values, what were there, what are there, and what will remain in the Jain. Because that is the uh, way Jain, way of life is, was and will remain. Thank you, Nitin Bhai. Ampana ji and Digamba Jain Mahasabha and Nirmal Kumar ji. Thank you all. No, I mean, I would like to say like whatever we have done here, somewhere RP Jain uncle sowed the seeds for my Salekana research by connecting me with the team who worked during those days. I think you see, and this is what the outcome. This is, RP Jain uncle was one of the persons who was uh, who, behind the scenes, uh, who is always there with me and he sowed the seeds for this particular Salekana research. Yeah, RP Jain sir really likes you. Long time back, we had a telephonic conversation and in that conversation, he was totally praising you. So he really likes you. Right. Thank you. Glad to That's hear. true. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. So now I would like to invite uh, Nirmal Kumar Sethi, sir, so to conclude the session. Sir, unmute KJ Maiko. क्या नाम बताए निर्मल के सेठी सर जी सर अनम्यूटेड नाउ यू कैन हियर मी यस वी कैन हियर यू रिस्पेक्टेड अंपाना जी और मोस्ट रिस्पेक्टेड अंपाना जी और नरेंद्र जी पार्सन फ्रॉम यूएसए मनीष जी मेहता और विजय कुमार जी फ्रॉम सागर और बचन कुमार जी and our uh, uh, Mr. R.P. Jain or our or both both log hai iske andar mein saath mein mein sab ko bhoot bhoot dhinnwa deta hoon aur Hampana ji ko bhoot dhinnwa deta hoon he could have spared time to for this session because he is a very costly man and uh, he really attends something <laughs> in which mass one is interested <laughs> Because he is very, very busy. So we are very glad to find him here today here. And I thank very much Nitin for his wonderful talk, deliberation. And uh, you know, we also remember Nitin for the great exhibition he has uh, organized in San Belgola in collaboration with Mahasava in uh, 1918, uh, in 2018. Uh, at that time, you know, I met uh, about uh, one week, uh, about two, uh, one fortnight ago, Dr. Sudha Malaya of uh, your Madhya Pradesh, is the wife of uh, our minister, Malaya ji. Uh, she told me that she was highly impressed from that uh, uh, exhibition and uh, how much she praised. So all that praise goes to Nitin for organizing that uh, exhibition in Sonabelgala. And today his speech is very good and very informative, but he has to again work here in this thing. So our uh, uh, our uh, my son-in-law, uh, Mr. Sanjay Gangwal from Raipur, and uh, his wife, my daughter, uh, Rekha Jain, and his father, Kanyalal Gangwal, they have given 51,000 rupees to Nitin for his such excellent deliberation. So, so I, I convey Nitin, you will get 51,000 rupees as your novel for this wonderful lecture. So we all appreciate you very much. And we appreciate you very much. And we pray during the day to give you more strength to work like this 
in future also. And as our Manish Mehta ji offered that he see he may this Jena may call you there. So if they call you, I will accompany you also. So we will all try to present these things there. Next thing I am telling you, the when the Supreme Court heard this Salyakna petition, I was there in the Supreme Court. You see, such a within I think a within uh, it seventy seconds within within sixty seconds within sixty or fifty seconds they gave a stay order. That was a wonderful thing. The giving of a stay order and the meeting which held. Uh, in presence of Mr. Singhvi, Abhishek Singhvi, they have made, Aray, made, bol lo. They have made me the chairman. Yeah, the uh, they have made me the chairman of this uh, committee of uh, Salekna. Uh, now, what we will do when this petition will come for hearing? At that time, uh, by, uh, we should also be prepared because we have to give many, many. Uh, uh, examples many many uh, to the Supreme Court to give a final order in our favor. So we have to again work in the when the hearing, hearing will come in the Supreme Court. So for this, uh, Mr. Nathan and his, all his friends and uh, Ampanaji should be prepared for that thing also. And today I thank very much to Jokshir Pawar, even she was sick. She has organized such a beautiful session. So I think him and our Nitu Jain, she also yesterday, she has done a great job and circulated this thing to everybody. Uh, so Nitu Jain, Nitu, Jain, Nitu Jain is also to be appreciated. And uh, all these, our Yatish Ji from Jabalpur, he is always cooperating with us. Uh, he has appreciated this thing. So I thank him also. I thank him, our Vijay Kumar Ji uh, in uh, Sagar, he is doing wonderful work in this uh, in this line. So I thank him also, and uh, I thank Sulek Jain. I think he must be hearing it, but I have not seen him in his picture. Uh, Sulek Jain is inspiring us for all these things, uh, and particularly he is very giving very great cooperation through Jaina uh, time, uh, every time. So I must uh, thank Sulek Ji for all these. Uh, uh, work which we are doing is encouraging us very much. So, Sulekji, we are very much grateful to you uh, for all this inspiration. And uh, uh, next week, we are also having a very good uh, program, which we will inform you soon. So, I thank Ampanaji. Ampanaji, we want you to get the knowledge of Padam Vibhushan. We will say the government of India to the Padam Vivusan ki upadi hamare Ampana ji Nagaraja ko milli chahiye and his deserve sheet and I have also recommended to the Bharati Gyan Pit for giving him uh, some best uh, uh, reward as they always do it. So that should go to Ampana ji also. So I think Ampana ji you are and also to your missus because I work with your missus uh, when uh, this uh, committee of 2,600 years, uh, our uh, Bhagavan Mahavir Janvoso was celebrated in Delhi and every part of India. At that time, his wife and myself, we were the committee member of government of India, uh, the highest committee member. So I thank your wife also for all these things. And uh, again, I think everybody who has attended this session and uh, I wish that uh, Nitin will work more hard for all these things. Thank him everything, everybody to be thanked. I I congratulate everybody for attending this thing and hope your same love and affection will continue with us. And in next week, we are also having a very good subject, which we, we will inform you very soon. Thank you. Ahinsa Parmo Dharam Ki Jai. Ahinsa Parmo Dharam Ki Jai. Bhagavan Mahavir Swami Ki Jai. Jain Dharam Ki Jai. Sarn Vilugala Ke Bahubali Bhagawan Ki Jai. Charu Kirti Bhattarak Swami Ji Ki Jai. Charu Kirti Bhattarak Swami Ji Ki Jai. Or Nitin Ki Jai. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, uh, Rakesh Jain has raised his hand. Ji, sir. Uh, 
बहुत ही सुंदर सेमिनार रहा मैं डॉक्टर इंदु जैन बोल रही हूँ बहुत ही अच्छा लगा हम लोग सुन रहे थे हम दोनों ही सुन रहे थे और बहुत ही बढ़िया विषय था और एकदम सारगर्भित रहा तो उसके लिए मैं बधाई देना चाहती हूँ बाबू जी को भी बधाई देना चाहती हूँ नितिन जी को भी और हमारे साथ जोशी जी अरविंद बोरा जी भी सुनते हम लोगों को अरविंद जी मेहनत रंग लाती है तो बच्चन जी बहुत सारे लोग बी एल सेठी जी और सभी लोग हमसे जुड़े हुए हैं और सबसे अच्छी बात कि हम बाना जी के आज सुनने का और उनको देखने का अवसर मिला तो यहाँ से बैठ के देखने का अवसर मिला इसके लिए मैं उनको प्रणाम करती हूँ आज सभी जितने दिग्गज लोग जुड़े हुए हैं सभी को मेरा वंदन और नमन और इसी प्रकार हम लोगों को इस तरह के सारगर्भित व्याख्यान सुनने का अवसर मिलता रहे महासभा की ओर से ये इतने अच्छे आयोजन होते रहे यही हमारी शुभकामना है बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया इंदु जी बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया फर्स्टली आई वुड लाइक टू एक्सप्रेस माई ग्रेटिट्यूडी को बोलना चाहते है क्या किने? यतीश सर आप कुछ कहना चाहेंगे अरविंद बोरा जी से पूछ सकते हो अरविंद सर प्लीज अनम्यूट माइक सर कैन यू हियर मी यस सर well nitin i remember uh, maybe 20 years ago he used to send email to all jaina people yes sir and up until then there were very few scholarly people who will write something that enlighten you you feel proud to be jain and learn at the same time and i'm very happy to see his face today and uh, needless to say with all the scholarly people uh, among us i am one of their students but uh, the work has been done uh, by nitin and his predecessors his mentor and all those things are very praiseworthy and i hope uh, particularly in western world our next generation carry on this tradition because power is right now in usa hand and more we can utilize that power to spread the truth education knowledge is the most precious things we can contribute to the humanity sure. thank you very much uh, uh, nirmal ji you are doing fantastic job uh, i think you deserve bharat ratna if i have a choice i would give it to you <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> आपका तो प्रेम हमारे पर हमेशा रहा है वेल आई आई डोंट वांट टू टेल टू मेनी प्राइवेट स्टोरीज बट आई वाज हिज गेस्ट एंड ही सैक्रिफाइस हिज 50th वेडिंग एनिवर्सरी टू मीट मी एंड स्पेंड टाइम विद मी सो आई कैन बी आई विल बी परपेचुअली इंडेटेड टू यू फॉर दैट सो यस यस थैंक यू सो मच सर यतीश जी आप कुछ कहना चाहेंगे उट द sculptures and monuments as described by the nitin ji thank you all of you thank you very much thank you sir thank you all of you. thank you sir thank you sir ji ajit ji ajit ajit sir hello jai jinder jai jinder sir i know nitin from since so so he was a very young young man so it was very delighted to here his presentation thank you thank you thank you sir nitin sir you have such a good fan following everybody likes you i don't know what it is i mean it's just a thing i've observed so far so without wasting time i would like to express my gratitude to hampana sir because without his presence we can't you know think of uh, such kind of topics without him 
and uh, thank you so much nitin sir we really needed such kind of topics to be discussed in such webinars because we need someone who can discuss openly about such topics and who, who can clear our doubts doubts about it so i'm really thankful to both of you hampana sir thank you so much for spending your valuable time sir thank you so much and thank, thank you, you so much nitin sir thank you so much everyone and see you all next sunday thank, thank you so much you.